Hey guys, this is Doa, and this is the best video game ever made. It's Chrono Trigger. And as the intro plays, and uh, maybe after the title screen goes past, I'll just go to the select screen, but basically this year, 2015, is the 20th anniversary of the release of Chrono Trigger in Japan. It came out um, earlier in the month, I think it was March in Japan, and August or so in uh, the US. And I didn't myself play it until, for the first time, until 1996. Let me just grab my controller here. There. And, uh, let's see. Hold on. Hold on. There we go. Okay, so, basically, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna play through this and talk about uh, kind of what I experienced the first time I played through this. And the reason this game is so special to me is uh, a lot of different things. The music, the story, um, you know, kind of one of the first one of the first JRPGs I played through. I played through quite a few uh, at already, you know, Final Fantasy III, of course, and some of the earlier ones. But Chrono Trigger was the first game that really you know, made me care about the characters themselves and really become invested in it. And that's just one of the many things I like about it. And I've actually played through Chrono Trigger every single year since 1996. So even though for me this playthrough will be, um, you know, many more than 19, but it's the 19th year in a row that I've played through the game, uh, it's the 20th anniversary of the game coming out. So I figured, you know, why wait until it's my 20th? I want to just do the 20th anniversary for... Blah, 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 20th anniversary for the game and just do a, a playthrough because it's such a great game and, and uh, I'm just going to kind of talk while we play it and, and uh, talk about my feelings uh, that I have for the characters and for the story and for the music and, and what I was feeling when I was a 11-year-old uh, kid playing through this for the first time and all that um, or 10-year-old kid? 10? Yeah, wait, hold up. Born in 1983, I played it in 96. That would make me 13? Yeah. I guess I was 13 when I played this first time. I don't know. That's math. I don't do math. But So I, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, I have no idea if this is going to be something that people want to watch or not. It's just something that I feel compelled to do because I love this game so much and it's the 20th anniversary of the game's release. And so, yeah, I'm just going to do a video series of me playing through Chrono Trigger and talking while I do it. And we're doing Wait because... I don't care about being hardcore, I just want to play through the game and enjoy it. And it gives me more time to talk, so... There we go. So, of course, the naming screen, and... I always had this thing where I never liked to rename my characters if I had a name provided to me. And, I mean, Chrono, it's a cool name anyway, so why would you need to rename it? I know people that, you know, like to rename their RPG characters after their dogs and cats and whatever, but I just like to stick with what the game designers intended. Whenever they have this kind of situation, and they already have a name listed, I'm like, why Why even bother, right? So, we're just gonna stick with Chrono. So without much further ado, Chrono Trigger, the best game ever made. And, uh, I'll do a lot of talking, but I need to find that balance of talking and just letting the game play, so any comments you want to give me about that too are, are fantastic, but here we are. Yeah, part of the overworld map. And a very tranquil opening to this game, you know? I mean, if you compare it to other big RPGs like Final Fantasy III, a.k.a. VI, you know, in Japan, with the opening war scenes and the mechs, like, trudging across the snow-covered plains. Like, that was epic and cool, but there was always something I really loved about the very tranquil Good Morning Chrono, you know, entrance to this game, where it's... It's literally just your character waking up, you know, and so it's a very good starting point for you as a player because it's kind of like you awaking into this world as well. So I always really, really liked that. It started out on a, kind of a peaceful note, so yeah, pretty cool. And I always love little touches like, you know, talking about, and, and I'm going to probably pronounce things in ways that people don't really uh, pronounce them, I guess. But that's just because I have my own pronunciation for them, because I've played this game for uh, 20 years, and now my dog is barking. I don't know why. Why is she doing that now? Now my cacao talking is going off. Holy crap, everything is going wrong. Give me a second. Wow, this is just annoying. Stop barking. Come on. Don't bark during Chrono Trigger. Alright. I promise this is going to get more... Uh, 
normal as things go on. I've already ran out the intro music. There you go. Yep. So, mom's waking me up. Chrono has a cat. I have a dog. There's a major difference between me and Chrono. He's also imaginary, and I'm not. So there you go. I'm using an Xbox controller. I wanted to get something a little bit more authentic, but uh, this is what I've got right now, so... You can close and open the shades. I was kind of like that. And I can't sleep in my bed now, because I just got out of it, but later I can. So again, the music. Just, it, the music in this game is so amazing. It's so good. Which is another tranquil, tranquil, peaceful opening. And I'll try to leave the text up so you can kind of read along uh, with me here, too. This is all very... You know, I'm kind of just like doing this. I didn't really go into the, this with a plan, so any any comments you want to throw at me is totally fine. Uh, maybe I'll stream parts of it later. But again, I'm not changing the character's name. Luca's just fine. Luca. That's what I always called her anyway. She's got a new invention. Ooh, foreshadowing. Yeah, Mom, I'll be home for dinner. Wink. Can talk to the cat. Um... I think at some point you can get a power tab or something like that out of the fridge. Maybe it's a different building. I always forget. It's weird, there's certain things that I always manage to forget despite playing this game every year. But, I'm supposed to go to the fair, of course. But of course, you can go around and talk to people. Nope, I haven't been there yet. It's true. Millennial Fair only happens once every thousand years. There weren't any near where I lived, though, in the year 2000. You know, she sees a reflection in the glass cabinet. Ah, yes, the beginner's in. We don't need to go there. Market, don't need to go there. And I really like going around and talking to people in RPGs, even if it doesn't advance the story. But you can get, you know, like this. They throw in people's opinions about other characters in the games. It's just little stuff that kind of builds the world and, and puts you in a little bit further. She has made a discovery of a lifetime. Spoiler alert. And see, like, stuff like this. Like, why? Why is this person this happy? Why? Is she happy that her husband finally admits that Luca's a brat? Or is there some other reason? Who knows? Let's go to the fair. Ah, so here we are, the Millennial Fair. And yes, you can body block the runners. See? Look at this guy's slowing down. This guy will a little bit too. This was an old strategy. You could read about it in Nintendo Power Magazine back in the day. But if you wanted to win the race, because the Millennial Fair, you could do things like bet on the races and earn silver points, with which you can then cash in for stuff. Uh, this guy lets you bet on the race. Sure, I'll try one up. I'm gonna guess... Uh, Green Ambler. He won last time. He probably won't win again. That was probably a terrible choice. But we'll see if I can body block some of these guys. Because the thing is, is there's some sort of... People always claim that they found some sort of, like, algorithm to, uh, you know, make the other people win. Like, well, if this guy wins the race, then the other ones are going to come in in this order. But then there was always a lot of debate between me and my friends early on in the 90s about, like, uh you know, who would win, but I was like, hey man, you can just walk through their sprites and slow them down. So look at that, Green Ambler, takes it by a mile. What do you know? Give me my reward. 20 silver points! It is one of the higher uh, silver point awarding things in the Millennial Fair. Look at her dad have made another crazy invention. I hope it doesn't blow up too. Hey kid, what's up? It's true. And since, apparently, people a long way away, because remember, Chrono's mom could hear Lean's bell from their house, a lot of people in this area have interesting and happy lives, which is a good thing. That's good. Let's go talk to this dude. He just sells stuff. Oh, yeah, that's right. All right, so I don't have any of that. Why are you barking? Stop it. Kid. Mako's getting spayed tomorrow, by the way. Maybe it's nerves. Who knows? <laughs> Oh yeah, that's right. I had friends that were just terrible at this. Am I good at this? First try! Yes! That's a good omen. 
We'll take that one silver point. I don't want to jinx it. And so here we start getting a little bit of backstory, right? There was a, a war against Magus 400 years ago. Or Magus. I always called him Magus. All my friends called him Magus. But yes, things are wonderful and peaceful now. But one of the things that makes this game absolutely incredible is uh, that it deals with time travel, which we'll see a lot of, you know, but time travel has always been my favorite story component out of any other story component you could possibly imagine. And this kid, you know, like many young people who grow up in times of peace, don't understand the big deal about past events that they may not have experienced. Yeah, we don't need to go to the Tent of Horrors right now. It's kind of a bunch of uh, mini-games that aren't too important. And now, the first big story event of the game. Oh my gosh. I may have instigated that. I'm the one who, like, stays down. Apparently it hurt worse for me. But see, this the first time you're playing this game, you, you just spent a few minutes, you know, talking to everybody else in the fair. You don't expect this to happen at all. And it's kind of like a, it's kind of a mechanic, if you will, that you just don't really see coming, which is... I remember, you know, being a kid and being like, whoa, I didn't expect that to happen, and being, like, really surprised and entertained. So there you go. She dropped her pendant. Which, I must have hit her really hard to knock a pendant off from around her neck. That's actually really impressive. So, you know, pick it up, of course. And then, being the gentleman that I am, I will track her down and return it. Can immediately. Yes, you may. And uh, things I do right now in the game have implications into an event that happens later that uh, I won't talk about. I'll try to spoil as, as little as possible, even though many people know how this game goes and many people have seen the story. But for those of you who haven't, um, I'll try not to spoil a lot. So, yeah. You live in this town, don't you? She's, like, really excited. Was that exclamation point really necessary? Sure. I'm a nice guy. A gentleman and a scholar. Okay, so here's the character that I think there's probably been the most name sort of debate around in Chrono Trigger. People say Marley, people say Marl. I always lean towards the Marl side, but after learning more about the English language throughout my schooling and stuff, I would say Marley is probably more accurate, but I'm just going to call her Marl because Mar that's what I called her for most of my young life, so why not? Chrono, but without the H. So it's more like a name? My dog is still staring at her reflection. She never does this. It's very weird. It's very strange. So, my first follower. Hooray! Oh yeah, she's missing her cat. This poor kid. And let me know what you think about the overlay as well, too. I have, you know, it's a widescreen format, so I wanted to keep the actual aspect ratio of the game intact. So I tried to fill it up with entertaining stuff. And if you don't want to see me on a webcam while I'm playing this, tell me that too. It's all very experimental. Alright, it's time to guzzle some soda! That's right, this is, I'm playing it on an emulated version of the original Super Nintendo cart, so... And I do own it, I own like every version basically, so it's all kosher, don't worry, kosher as can be anyway. But, uh, in the American version they changed beer to soda, so... Soda guzzling contest, right? Alright, so I'm gonna press A as fast as I can, right? Ah, oh, seven cans. It's nearly impossible to get eight on the Super Nintendo controller. I am competitive. I'll do it one more time. One more time. All right, and then I won't waste one more time. This. Okay. Go. I don't know if there's like a faster way to do this. I'm like 31, so I don't have that like sick APM anymore. Oh, all right, seven. I give up. I'm not that competitive, Marl. I just gave up after only trying twice. Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Alright, so I got some gold. And that's the value of silver points. You know, you can exchange for gold. What's up, old man? Are you really? I'm pretty sure you're just gonna keep wandering back and forth for the rest of the game. Hey, look, it's a cat. What do you think? And now it's following me. Hmm, I seem to recall a little girl wondering where her cat was. And the thing with this cat is if you run too fast, you can easily lose it on the uh, terrain, so you have to walk. And I'm just walking to enjoy myself, too. Like, see? Stupid cat. It's already stuck on the table. Alright. Yay! 
I'm such a great guy. Just trying to impress my new girlfriend, Marl. Or Marley, <laughs> whatever. But, there's an area up here we haven't explored just yet. Let's check this out. Oh my gosh, it's a giant pink robot. The inspiration for Blitzcrank, perhaps? Alright, so I get 15 silver points if I beat this dude up. And this is really your first encounter with combat in the game. And so, in Chrono Trigger you have basic attacks, and then sometimes you get punched by somebody's stomach fist. And uh, when the screen fr uh, flashes like that, it's a critical hit, so Meryl just crit with her attack, which is kind of cool. Doesn't happen much. Chrono's taking quite the beating. But this should be the last hit. Oh no, I need to hit him one more time, I think. If you get one crit, I think you can do it in four regular attacks, or two crits. That should do it, yeah. Alright. And so tech points build up, um, basically build up, they're kind of like a separate experience points thing, and it gives you access to spells. They don't really call them spells in this game. There's a difference between, well, there's magic and then there's tech moves. And tech moves are basically like kind of martial artsy sort of stuff, and spells are more like, well, magic is magic. Is a way to describe it, I guess. It was fun, Gato. Thank you. Now the thing is, is that you don't get your health back or anything like that. Um, unless you go sleep in an inn or something. Which is a little bit awkward to do with this girl that you literally just met after running into her. But if you don't, then you are a little bit vulnerable in the very first fight of the game when, when stuff gets real. But I'm gonna risk it anyway, I'm not worried. Actually, we need some silver points turned into gold. Yeah, why not? You know what? All I need is four more silver points to get 50 more gold, so I'm gonna go win the uh, bell game again real quick. Here we go. Let's see if I can do it. Come on. Alright, one. Two. Good, good. Three. Alright, nice. Four. I am a master of the bell game. It's harder than it looks, by the way. It's actually hard. Alright, perfect. And so, I'm actually going to go buy a couple potions, too. This is, a, you know, one of the more older school RPGs, I guess you could say. So it is one of those ones where you do sometimes need to grind a little bit. Um, you do want to go into everything with, um... You know, you do want to go into everything with a couple potions and stuff like that. And you have the opportunity to buy some armor. Now, I don't... I think people are wearing wood helms right now. Let's see. I'm gonna talk to... Uh, and yeah, now the game starts telling you to go. Because at first you can't go and uh, see the device just yet. You have to spend some time in the fair kind of exploring before you're allowed to advance with the story. Uh, Iron Blade. Oh, yeah. You know, once... I'm not kidding you. Once I actually did enough fair games to afford the load sword. Is that crazy or what? I had a lot of time on my hands when I was a kid. But, uh, as is, let's see, 8. It's not really that much of an upgrade, so I'm gonna go ahead and pass on that. Yeah. See, this one's, this one you gotta be careful a bit about, because if you just hit A mindlessly, you'll accidentally hit I'll Try, and you... It depends on how you want to play it, but generally I don't like to mess with any of that stuff. But let's go ahead and buy some armor real quick here, too. Let's see. And I'm going to save the rest of the gold. Just getting a helm. Yep, I know Luca's device is set up. That's true. There we go. So that's a nice little de uh, defense boost early on. And so in terms of arms and armor in this game, uh, weapons can cause status effects and accessories can prevent status effects. But other than that, uh, well, yeah, armor can prevent status effects as well. Um, and I think give you a couple of bonuses here and there, but mostly it's just armor upgrades or damage upgrades. No, it's the latest gossip, dude. Gossip. Oh boy. She sounds like quite the handful. Hmm. Alright, so this, this is actually the most challenging part for a 13 year old in this game. This is the most challenging part in the entire game. You have to not do anything until she buys candy. If you touch the controller, it starts over. The time starts over. So, 
you have to wait. And it's only like 10-15 seconds, but I remember being a kid and being like, Ah, oh, I just have to move my hands! And it took like two or three times. But now we can move on. It's time. So there's Luca's dad, Taven. And I always take time to read the dialogue. And again, I'm trying to give you time to read the dialogue as well. Luca with the fist bump. She's super happy. Those are some pretty intense glasses, it's true. <laughs> so apparently the NPCs are all just talking about uh, Luca's glasses. Do they never work right? And naturally, to impress the uh, the devastatingly attractive blonde I just met, I will jump into the untested machine that supposedly moves you from one place to another in a very suspicious manner. Because what guy wouldn't do that? Alright. Wish me luck. And apparently Taven's way to activate this machine is just to hit it with a hammer over and over again. That should be my first clue that things are a little bit off with this. I'm a little bit suspicious about the methodology here, because clearly there's a lever right in front of him, but yet he just smacks it with a hammer a bunch. I don't know. But I made it through in one piece, I'm okay. I could try it again. <laughs> Confidence from Taven is overwhelming. So Marl being emboldened by my survival, decides she wants to try it. How do you pick up a cutie like her? Well, apparently mild concussions are pretty good for that sort of thing. Alright. So at this point in the game, things are still going well, you know? It's a very peaceful, sort of fun thing. But, soon. Sound effects in this game are great too, by the way. Oh boy. Taven's sitting with the hammer again. And Luca, I don't know what she's doing. She's kind of gyrating in front of the machine. But what's this? Whoa. And that effect looked crazy awesome on the Super Nintendo back in the day. That was intense. She's gone. Uh oh. That's right. Get out of here, weird old guy with the misshapen head. Yeah, that pendant. And, um,. If you're not aware, too, the uh, character design in this game was actually done by Akira Toriyama, who is famous for doing the art for things like Dragon Ball Z, actually, so... Another kind of point in its favor. Alright, well, I am the hero, so... I will go and grab the pendant. And this is also one of the last great silent protagonist RPGs. And there were a few others, you know, beyond this Final Fantasy VII, and, and I'm sure there's plenty I'm not mentioning, but it was really, uh, you know, when the PlayStation started becoming big and, and uh, RPGs sort of vaulted into that next generation, kind of a 3D generation, that the silent protagonist kind of went away. Uh, the main character started talking more. And, uh... I'm such a hero here, obviously, but I, I like this, you know, because if you are, uh, if your protagonist, if the person you're playing as is talking, then it kind of takes away part of the role-playing experience, I think, you know, in, in that this way, um, I was always able to kind of imagine what Chrono would have said if it were me, you know, uh, whereas with, like, Tidus from Final Fantasy X, he's kind of just, like, a whiny little person, right? So it's I, I, there wasn't a lot of respect there for me. But uh, I like the silent protagonist in RPGs. It's cool. So, 
Chrono, not knowing where Marl went, is just going to go ahead and put on the pendant and just try to go to the same place. And there's something cool about that very altruistic heroism, you know, not knowing where you're going, not knowing what happened, but just being willing to put yourself out there to help somebody that you just met, really, you know, it's, it is really quite heroic, you know? And it's things like that that make me really love this game, is that it's, it's, you, it doesn't have to be you saving the world right away from minute one, you know, it can just be you wanting to help somebody in need, which is a really cool thing. So... Luca claims she will follow. I'm not sure if she can do that without the pendant, but... Or do I leave that behind? But this effect, like, blew my mind when I was 13 or 12 or however old I was when I played this game the first time. Because it's... I don't know. I think it was, uh... Oh, what was it called? There was some sort of name for this effect that we just saw, and it was like a new thing. But here I am in this unknown land. I should... Uh, oh, I can't go to my inventory right now, so I can't use one of the tonics from earlier. Uh -oh. And now I'm getting fight by, like, tiny Piccolo Jr. guys. Oh, critical hit! Nice! And, uh, one of the cool things about the combat in this game is that you can press Y to shift where the readout is on the screen. So... I always liked that because it, it gave you the ability to sort of keep a better eye on the battlefield later on in the game. There's more things you want to watch. And uh, it also was one of the first RPGs that was turn-based, but yet didn't teleport you to a completely different screen to do the fight. You stayed on the same screen, which, which I always thought was really neat as well, too. After playing things like Final Fantasy and Pokemon, you know, where you would go to, like, a completely different screen every fight. So... Sometimes you can't avoid fights like this, but a lot of the enemies in this game you can avoid if you don't want to fight them. And just walk past them. I wouldn't recommend that because you really need the levels, and this game, the game's difficulty can outlevel you pretty quickly if you do that. So it's worth kind of fighting everything. Hey, I learned Cyclone, my first tech move. Nice. That's cool. And treasure chest, there's a tonic. I should probably use one. Yeah, definitely. And so let's check out the tech moves. So you can see the next one that you will get, how many skill points you need, how many tech points rather you need. Uh, it's interesting, they call it skill points, but I believe in the battle readout at the end of the combat it says tech points, but uh, it doesn't really matter, they're both the same thing. So, Cyclone, I can hit guys in an AoE sort of circle with that. And yeah. Wow, sometimes, sometimes, apparently chests are open. Ah, a power glove. So I get my first accessories. So I'm wearing the bandana right now, which increases my speed, I think. And Power Glove just simply increases your power. You go from 6 to 8, but I lose 1 speed. That's a trade worth making right now. Yep. Speed matters a lot more in the active battle system, uh, with the weight battle system where everyone has to take a turn. It doesn't matter as much. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do Cyclone here. I'll show it to you. Yep. And just regular old AoE attack. Of course. But strong enough to kill everybody once. You have to be kind of sparing with your uh, uses of tech skills early on. Because uh, you don't get a lot of opportunities to refill them. And you really need them for boss fights, honestly. There are some bosses you just really can't auto-attack your way through. And so, let me just go back out here for a second. So, this is really neat. Because... Playing through this game the first time, I had no idea what it was about. I really didn't. You know, I, I had kind of a feeling it was about time travel, but I kind of was going to this blind. Uh, the first time I played this, actually, while we listened to this wonderful music, I'll just tell you the short story and then we'll move on, but um, it was... I didn't own a Super Nintendo, actually. My parents didn't really buy video game systems for us when we were kids. We lived out in the country and so we went outside and played. That's what we did. But I love video games because I went over to my friend's house and played them. And so I, I got to play Chrono Trigger because I, it was my birthday. And I, on my birthday, I got to rent a console from the local video store and it won game. And I got to rent it for two days. And so I basically just rent that and then just play it for two days straight and then I have to take it back, you know? Because uh, that's what people used to do. You used to rent video game consoles, actually, and, and rent a game from the same place you rented all your other VHS movies. So that's how I played Chrono Trigger the first time. I rented a Super Nintendo and I, and I played it, and I didn't get to finish it then. 
but later in the year, I was able to buy a Super Nintendo and get the game and finish it from a summer job that I did. But uh, that aside, see, we come out of here and suddenly it looks similar to where we were. But if we look down here, you know, where the ferry was and where Chrono's house was, there's just a little peninsula. And clearly, it's the same place, but when are we? So naturally, start exploring around town. And so, if you talk to the people in the fair, when this guard says that you're talking about Magus's army, you're like, wait a minute, I thought that happened 400 years ago, so... You get little clues. Of course I knew that. Wow, what a rude guy. Everyone, of course, is kind of confused. Yep. Apparently the queen was missing, but she was found now, interestingly enough. But yet when Weeb showed up, there was no sign of, of Mar or Marley or whatever. The more talk about this Magus guy, sounds like a pretty badass dude. The first talk of the South Continent as well. And Toma the Explorer. It's a precursor to Dora the Explorer, many years before. Who knew? Yeah, sure, I'll buy him a drink. Cider, please. Yes, I'd like some cider. I, uh, I enjoy a good glass of cider, too, after my soda drinking competition. Yeah. But unfortunately, Toma's story is cut short when we find that the queen was found. So. I could stay night in the end, but I will not. But again, I just really like going and talking to people. There's so many little story elements that you get if you talk to people around town, you know? You should always talk to everybody in RPGs. And so already you're seeing connections. This game did such a wonderful job of connecting the past to the present to the future and all that, and connecting the timelines in a very believable and, and kind of cool way. So here's the guy actually making the bell that was such a big deal in the previous time that we were just in, you know? Very cool. And I'm going to try to keep these episodes to about an hour to two hours long. I think that's a good way to do it. I'm not totally sure. We'll see. Again, you know, any feedback you want to give me about this, because this is totally just... I'm totally winging it right now, so any feedback you want to give me is, is welcomed. And now we find out exactly when it is. Year 600, so... Indeed, it seems confirmed, according to this woman at least. We just barged into her house and she wants to tell us what year it is. It's the year 600. And how long have we been going? It's been about... okay. 33 minutes? Perfect. Great. You can see a lot of soldiers around. And here we go. Some nice upgrades, and I've made a little bit more money from fighting those guys. You can see uh, weapons already for other people that I've not gotten in my party yet. Um, and at this point, I think... Let's see, how many tonics do I have? Yeah, I think I will go ahead and buy a sword. A couple of tonics. And if you haven't noticed, this definitely is not a uh, speedrun or anything like that. And you can equip from the buying screen, which is pretty cool. But yeah, this is definitely not a speedrun. I'm just playing this game at the speed I like to play it, because I love this game. And I just wanted to share it with people. I don't know. It's been 20 years since this game came out. How cool is that? So, you kind of wander around. You're like, where should I go next? Guardia Forest, which has one of the best songs ever. But first we'll be paused for combat. I have to kill these birds with, I don't know what's on their head. If that's like a, a cross or a nipple or whatever. I don't know. Blue eaglets, man. What's wrong with their heads? But as you can see, creatures don't do a lot of damage. I think that slows you though. I think that's a condition I have. Critical hit! Yeah, this song is so good. I don't even want to talk during it. Uh, during the this song here. Oh my gosh, 
just in the bush. Oh no, it's dudes. But yeah, that... The Guardia Forest theme. If you ever have a night where you just can't sleep, just look up that video on YouTube and put in some headphones and just listen to it. And it will put you to sleep because it's very peaceful and relaxing. So, just bulldozing my way through some of the more, uh, some of the earlier minions here. But you do have to keep an eye on your health total. Because if you don't use any tonics or anything like that, by the time you get to uh, some of the later things, you'll be wishing you had. So, I'll just go ahead and use Cyclone to kill two of these guys. And you can see the whole battle thing is based on uh, the bar filling up. I'm like pointing at it on the screen like you can see it. I'm like, right there. Yes. I leveled up. I'm getting a lot of gold from these guys. That's good. And yes, we start to notice these chests around that you can't open them, but you have to keep note of where they are for later. And so clearly by now, as a player, we've deduced that the queen that was found was probably not the queen that they were looking for. Which brings the question, what is Marl's true past? Apparently having a stamp collection was a really nerdy thing back then. I guess it kind of still is now, isn't it? Well now it's kind of like really unique because nobody usually uses stamps. Because yeah, this was 1995. This was in the very early days of the internet. So I remember... Um, so the queen is vouching for us, which is pretty cool. But she looks very familiar, doesn't she? I feel like we've seen this person somewhere before. Hmm. But I remember my, one of my first internet experiences was loading up the Nintendo.com website at my friend's house. And it took like 15 minutes for a picture of Yoshi to load, but we were so excited. I don't know why. Didn't take much to get excited in 1995, I guess. Alright, so we'll follow the Queen. Guardia the 21st. XX size? 21, right? Yeah. If my Roman numerals are wrong, let me know. What's up, Chancellor? Wow, we're rude, dude. Let me know if I'm going through the text too fast as well. Um, I'll probably stream things of this later so I can get feedback in real time, but I don't know, I just was bored tonight so I decided to record the first episode. And let me know how the audio levels are, of course, too. I think they're good. I tested them out and they seemed okay. Alright. Someone's upstairs in a room waiting for me. Yes, immediately start looting the castle. So it's still a bit confusing. Why does this queen care? Hmm, suspicious. I forgot to grab the chest. Oops. Off to the left. You can kind of see it behind the chair. Giggle. Oh my gosh, it's Marl. I can't believe it. Or Marley. I'm just going to stick with Marl even if it's wrong. Now, a tender moment. Oh, 
You're welcome. Awkward. Well, so she disappeared again. But I got nothing. Yay! Yeah, it's sure. <laughs> and it's just like little fun things like this. Like, uh, what do I say here? I mean, she disappeared, but I didn't really do anything. So, I'll just say, of course not. I want to see what the other answer is. Well, yes. <laughs> Ladies in waiting. Oh, how they love to gossip, apparently. I did notice something odd the way she kind of vanished after describing the sensation of being torn apart. That was a bit odd, come to think of it. Yeah. <laughs> this dude's, he's tired of that stuff. Well, uh, so she disappeared. That's a bit awkward. But hey! Look who it is! It's Luca! But see, it's the silent protagonist, you know? So all the characters are responding as if you say something, even though we never actually see what the main character says, which is... which is cool. Because again, you get to like imagine what you would say, and so it kind of puts you into the game more, in my opinion. Apparently Luca visits the castle in 1000 AD a lot. Hmm. And now the true entity, true entity, true identity of Marl is revealed. As Princess Nadia. See your child, you walk, then you eat something, and then you have a baby. So... Thank you, Squaresoft, answering the question of where do babies come from. Apparently you just eat something and then babies come out. I don't know. But they do a really good job of explaining implications of the past being changed affecting the present. Which is, if you think about it, it's a little bit more of a complicated concept to get across to preteens, you know? But they do a good job explaining it here. And this was back when they could say things like killed in stuff marketed to kids. And not knocked out or fainted. So, yep, yeah, I'm very surprised. Chrono is very shocked about that. So the reason for her disappearance is explained that she simply ceased to exist because her ancestor was killed. And everybody's kind of saying the same thing. So we're actually going to go and rest, get the health and tech points back. I do. Yep, past has been changed and all that, but I gotta take a nap first. There we go. All good. So Luki uses guns, and uh, every character, nearly every character, later on gains access to magic as well. But so Luka is the third party member we come across, back through Guardia Forest and its amazing music. And most of the regular enemies in the game, you can just auto-attack your way through. Uh, a lot of them, if, you're, if your weapon is up to snuff, if your gear is up to where it should be, uh, you can generally one-shot them. Uh, characters like Luca and Marl usually can't. That was a bit inefficient. I, I should have had Chrono attack the other one, actually. And I like that they do melee attacks if they're a ranged character but are close, in close proximity to the enemy. That's kind of a cool touch. 
Yeah, they do call it tech points, but... No. So, you can get through it with only fighting uh, one group on your way out. And so, we know that this mysterious cathedral has been the source of many mysteries. Let's save the game, actually. There. And let's go ahead and save our state, too, just in case. Alright, we're going to the cathedral. And immediately, when you're talking to these people, you can sense that something is a bit creepy. Yeah, these nuns or whatever are creepy. And we notice something flashing here. And so, again, you know, I mean, just to take a, a small break, as adults, it's really easy to become cynical and, you know, not allow yourself to really be drawn into the atmosphere of a game like this, um, or really any game anymore. But when you're, you know, 10 to 13, you know, I, I think I was like 12 or 13 in 96 when I first played this, but uh, then it was, it was really easy to get drawn in. And so being in this chapel, I remember being genuinely creeped out. Um, I think part of it was because my dad's a pastor, so you know, I went to church every Sunday, I, I, you know, grew up in a very religious house, so having a chapel being a, suddenly, like, a very dark, sinister place, when I always associated it with, you know, like, happiness and, and light and stuff like that, was, was very creepy to me at that age. So, that was really cool, because I liked being creeped out, it was fun. So, let's see what we find. Yep. Uh-oh. Yeah, so now they change into like bikini snake ladies. Oh no. But I think we can get away with just auto attacking him. So that attack does one damage, but I think it has a chance to charm as well. I think it takes two basic attacks. Ah, okay. Let's see. I'm actually gonna attack move with this. There. So Lucas should be able to do enough damage to finish off the one that we were attacking originally. And we'll see if this one shots him. Nope, it should not. Some enemies are a little bit more resistant to tech moves than others. That was a critical hit, so that should... Ooh, wow, that's right. Oh yeah, it slows. That's what it does. That's the kind of stuff I always forget, is like individual little status effect stuff. But these are the first stronger-ish enemies that you fight. You can see they take a couple hits each to uh, take out. And so if you're a player that isn't used to this game and you haven't been using potions and things like that, or using tonics rather like I have, it's easy to imagine yourself being suddenly at very, very low health in this situation. Because um, I remember I was. You know, I, I had been taking damage from the enemies I've been fighting so far in the game. I hadn't gone and really rested and healed up, so I nearly died in this fight the first time I played it. Of course, now I'm much wiser, you know, resting up and using tonics. But that's how old school RPGs were, you know, they didn't reset your health every single time you moved to a new area and stuff like that. If you're getting the sense that I'm a bit cynical towards newer RPGs, it's because I am. I just haven't been... haven't been as a... Oh, and then we learned our first dual tech there. I haven't been as impressed with the uh, newer RPGs that have come out since, like, Final Fantasy. Ten. Yeah. Oh, look out! Ack. And then this dude comes out of nowhere and speaks in kind of faux old English, which is awesome. It's Frog. Luca hates frogs, I guess. We encounter another hero. It's nice that Luca was able to get over a frog prejudice so quickly. Well, almost get over it anyway. 
<laughs> I'm not gonna still bark into reflection. Hey, it's just a reflection, don't worry about it. Yeah, it's okay. And so, yeah, just name the frog Frog, why not? He's got big biceps. <laughs> He's like, you just won a ticket to the gun show. So Frog tells us that a hidden door is nearby. So we click around, we discover. This a hidden door. Alright. So here we are in our first uh, actual dungeon of the game, if you want to call it that. And the enemies in here are not a joke either. They are pretty strong for uh, this early part of the game. And you know, most enemies in most dungeons need to be se taken semi-seriously at least, but Frog already, you can see, is a little bit stronger than your characters. I think he's got about 20 hit points up on the level that I'm at right now or so. These guys don't have a ton of health. Critical hit! But I probably should use a tonic or two right now. Yeah. And so the tech moves that I get, honestly, you don't really need them a whole lot. You only use them for kind of AoEing big groups of enemies, and then uh, certain boss fights are, are what tech moves end up being for. Revive, that's good. Tonic, that's good too. And so we'll just sort of fight our way through here. Try to see if we can find. Queen Lean, Lene, Lian, however you want to pronounce it. So there are more efficient ways to go through attacking like this. I'm being a little bit lazy. Generally, if you know one of your weaker characters has enough damage to finish off an enemy, you uh, want to swap and have your stronger guy hit the one that hasn't been damaged yet. Let's go in here. Aha. Uh -huh. Maiden suit, so that. And there's certain uh, there's certain items that can only be used by males and females. So, shockingly, the maiden suit can only be used by uh, females. So you can see each character has an element assigned to them as well too. And that's a little bit of a clue as far as what sort of magic elements they'll control later in the game. Oh yes, the secret naga et bromide. There's a uh, various little hidden uh, items here. So when you find the Naga at Bromide, it activates this fight, which is a bit harder than uh, the other fights. I'm gonna try my dual tech on this, because I actually don't remember. Um, can I hit all three? No. Oh well. And there's a primary and secondary target with a lot of AoE stuff. We'll see how much this does. I can't remember if these are the guys that are resistant to tech moves or not. We'll find out. Nope, they're definitely not. Alright. Ah, they're resistant to regular attacks, that's right. Alright. Well, we'll just have Fro Frog use his first tech move. Is that enough? It was. Nice. So we get a nice amount of uh, XP and tech there. A lot of gold, actually. 405 is a lot of gold for right now. And so, there's lots of hidden stuff in this game. This is actually a game with 13 endings. Uh, when you beat the game for the first time, you're able to access what's called a plus game, which lets you start over, uh, start the game over with your characters already max leveled, with all the items that you had before, you know, when you ended the game. And uh, then what that allows you to do is it lets you go through and beat the game at uh, earlier times than you could have otherwise. And so that's how you get the different endings, is you go through and you beat the game at earlier and earlier stages in game completion, basically. And uh, swords are not interchangeable. Frog uses different sorts of swords than Chrono does, so I can't, you know, equip Frog with the sword that I just took off of Chrono or anything like that. There's lots of switches around here. Ah. A power tab. And so, tabs like that are basically used to permanently increase stats. So, uh, generally you want to save... If you're thinking really far ahead, the general idea is you save them and give them to the characters that you're going that you're planning on beating the game with. And there's one combo that I always beat the game with. 
so I'm actually going to uh, wait and not give that power tab to anyone yet. That's reserved for somebody else. Ah, let me see, these guys are actually captured guards. And more connections to Magus as well. And a possible hidden treasure. Interesting. And so as you can see, you can dodge past these enemies if you want to. But then again, there are certain, like, tripwire sort of areas where you activate them no matter what. But you can see we didn't pull in both of them. Both of the bat dudes, anyway. The Diablos? Yeah. Snake dude's a serious business. Hopefully my dog isn't being too distracting in the background. We're too cute! These guys have 90 health, so they take a couple hits. Uh, normally you can't see the hit points of the enemies in the game, but Luca has a, an item called the Sight Scope right now that she comes equipped with default that lets you to see that. And it's not really an item that's terribly useful um, later on in the game, but if you're on your first playthrough ever, then uh, I can see it being a, a little bit more useful. But it's worth going to these side rooms because you can get items and things like that. And this is kind of a neat little place. Yep. You can see that the minions of whoever is in here have been posing as humans for a while. Ah, Yakra. And so these guys just reveal the plot, basically. That the Chancellor has been replaced. And this guy talks about going and looking in on something. Basically leads you to uh, a little interesting story element. We have the treasure chest first. Priorities, guys. We gotta get the treasure. So, suspicious. Ah, and it's because they're evil. It kind of looks like these snakes are wearing, like, uh, collars, too, for some reason. As if they were, like, fancy male snake strippers and they were just wearing that, like, you know, bow tie collar thing. So that's what it gives me the impression of, anyway. I don't know why. And I'm gonna save right now my, uh, I'm gonna save my magic points because I'm going to need him for the boss fight. And I believe I need a little bit more experience to get the dual tech that Frog and Chrono use, called X-Slash. Because it's kind of a key ability to defeating the first boss. Let me just double check here. Do we have it yet? Nope, not yet. So. I think in the next room is... Yakra? So I'm going to go back, because I want to go to the Magus room first. But the dungeons aren't super long, generally. You can dodge these guys. Oh yeah, like a boss. Okay, got around him nice. Ah, oh, it's a save point. I think the, actually the other one might have been the Yakra room. And we don't have any shelters, so we can't basically do the in sort of thing. Okay, yeah, let's go back to the other room. My bad. Let's do this fight over again. It's okay. Because again, it's definitely not a bad thing to get more XP and more levels. Because this being, you know, one of the a rather old school RPG, it, it is pretty unforgiving if you get behind the level curve of the enemies. So this one's going to be, this episode's going to be a little over an hour long, because we're going to finish this dungeon and then kind of cut it there. And I want to try to do one or two of these a week, and make it between an hour and two hours long. There we go, X-Strike. That's what I was looking for. Alright. So let's go check out that other room that we avoided later, or avoided earlier.
Ah, uh, yes, this is the Magus room. Statue to Magus. Speed belt, pretty cool. And I think, let's see, reduce my power by three, but increase my speed by two. And that just increases the rate at which your gauge fills up during battle. Defender. And... Gives you a little bit of a defense increase. Not enough, though. And so these guys don't fight because they're too busy worshipping Magus. I think you can fight them if you attack them, but... I've kind of had to backtrack already, so I'm going to speed things up a little bit. Once you've seen one fight, you've kind of seen them all. Oh, no, I went the wrong direction. Oh, well, apparently if you go around the right side, you hit an invisible trick thing. And so here, I do feel kind of compelled to use a little bit of my magic points. It's okay, though. jeez. Oh, and so Luca's Flame Toss hits in a line. So, as you can see do a lot of damage. And that's more elemental type damage, so I guess that works much better. These guys seem a little bit more resistant to physical damage. Alright, cool. Levels are good. And I'm gonna just use my ether on Chrono uh, right now. Ten more magic points for him. That brings him up to full, I believe. And so let's go ahead and save. And state save as well, too, just to make sure. Alright, can't go in there yet. There's a treasure chest, though. Oh boy. Dodge the bat! Dodge everything! Alright, so that... Oh, we can't get back up that way. Yeah. Uh, oh! Controller almost did me in there. And heal, I believe, takes away status ailments. Well, that just adds more bats, that's right. <laughs> that's not what you want to hit. <clears throat> Alright. So, shelters are good. And, uh, let's go ahead and just save one more time. I'm kind of obsessive-compulsive about saving right before I do something. I don't know why. Alright. So here's certainly one of the bigger fights in the game. <clears throat> And we'll want to use a couple tech moves here. And can we hit all three? Yes, we can. Great. The frog can go ahead and just uh, physical attack one of these Diablos. Ah, but that's right. They're resistant to physical damage. Oops. Oh well. We'll just auto attack them then. Resistant to pretty much every kind of damage. Aside from Luca's Flame Toss, so we don't really have any good elemental stuff yet. Which makes it uh, kind of annoying to fight these guys. Luca's positioning right now isn't really as such that we could hit more than one guy, so it's not really worth using either. Might as well just keep auto attacking. So it took a little bit of damage, but it's not so bad. Made a decent amount of gold, and we can get the treasure. Iron Sword, I believe that is for Frog? Yes, it is. Okay, great. Yeah, Swords are for Frog, Sabres are for Chrono, I'm pretty sure. And again, just like before, we'll play the organ. We hear something open somewhere. Save one more time. And I'm not going to bother to use the shelter or anything like that. I will apparently go the wrong way, though. Yeah. Dodge the bat. A lot of the bat minions in this game are annoying. Um, as you're about to see. I can't remember if these guys are or not, but some of the bats do things like suck your magic points away. A lot of them just simply don't take a lot of damage, so they take a few hits, even if you're really strong to kill. 
And I want to say these are just kind of like normal enemies the very first time you meet them, but yeah, you're gonna learn to hate bats by the end of this game. Yeah, he's just a regular bat, but man, some of the bats in this game, I hate bats. This game makes you hate bats. Alright, so we avoid this guy. Ah, uh, or we don't. Or we do. I guess we do. What's to say? <clears throat> Alright, I guess I tried hard enough already. And dodging more guys. Another save. I accidentally saved twice there, but it's okay. I can't get to the treasure chest yet. And it appears to be the Chancellor. And we see that Queen Lean actually knows uh, Frog already. Interestingly enough. Gahaha. The uh, Chrono Trigger version of the Vui He He used by Kefka in Final Fantasy III. This guy's no Kefka, that's for sure. <clears throat> and like any true Japanese monster, he has to announce everything he's doing before he's doing it. And that is a weird looking dude. Reverts to Yakra. So Yakra is vulnerable to uh, this kind of stuff. You'll see. X Strike. So in this fight, generally. Why am I. What the heck? There we go. Generally, Luca ends up being sort of the uh, tonic dealer. Yeah, and you have to be careful about when you attack. You, d you generally don't want to use ranged attacks on this guy anyway, because he does a counterattack as well. There. Let's strike again. And uh, it's good to kind of wait to see what his attack is going to be, yeah, because this is his AoE. And sometimes... Alright, that wasn't so bad. But it looks like Frog could use a tonic. Because he has some, like, flying spike attack, if I remember. Yeah, needle attack, he has been. That does pretty decent damage to somebody. Yeah, 51 damage right there. Jeez, Chrono's dead! Ah! That's not good. Alright, that did a little bit of damage. I'm not gonna die on this guy, am I? I haven't died. Where's my revive? There we go. I haven't died on this guy in a long time. Alright, we have to immediately heal Chrono. And Luca's gonna have to heal herself as well. We're just gonna let Chrono sit until Frog, frog stuff comes back. Ah, oh, this controller, this Xbox controller is really hard to uh, quickly switch through the menu menus. Luckily, this is another reason why I'm playing Wait, because I can't move through things as quickly. The D-pad on the Xbox controller is not the greatest. And so we need to keep everyone's health above 50. And it's getting a little bit scary. Alright, but we just keep doing damage with X-slash or X-strike. And cross our fingers that he doesn't needle attack frog. Because uh, we're almost out of tonics, actually. I should have bought more tonics. I went through this way too fast. Stress, and we're running out of magic points as well. He should be almost dead, though. Like, one or two more hits should do it. Oh, boy. Oh, jeez. Is he gonna hit? Not Chrono, not Chrono. Uh, do I go ahead? YOLO! I'm going for it. It's the last one I have mana for, too. No, I've got mana for a few more. Yes, that did it. Although I think Luca might not get XP from this now, but oh well. She's never in my main party anyway. So there we go, first boss of the game down. Yeah, but after a fight, anyone who's dead comes back with one health, so you can still heal them up, so you don't have to drag their bodies around. Yeah, we'll join you as soon as I take the loot in these treasure chests. Hey! <laughs> Mr. 
mid ether. Nice. Alright. And so you get teleported right back to the throne room. And so it seems like, you know, I mean, again, the, the greater story does not reveal itself very quickly in this game, which is cool, too. I like some kind of basic stuff that leads into the greater storyline. So the first adventure only takes, yeah, a little over an hour, and we did it pretty slowly, too. So good kind of intro to the game. Yeah. Frog's theme. Iconic for any Chrono Trigger fan. Frog, though, displeased that he wasn't able to protect the Queen, apparently. More foreshadowing there. And yes, in case you as a player have forgotten, Marl is still missing. Everyone's asking about that. Luca gives us a clue as to where we'll find Marl, or Marley, whatever you want to call it. I'm so torn between the two. Because Marley, I think, is more accurate, but Marl's what I called her for years before I figured this out. I was a kid, what do you expect? But hey, check it out! She's back! Hopefully I'm not going through the text too fast. So this game like does deal with progressively heavier things as well too, which is cool. So suddenly, you know, you have this kind of lighthearted adventure, but then you also have another character like contemplating what death feels like, you know? Which for, again, you know, a, a preteen kid in uh, the Midwest is something that, you know, you maybe haven't considered too much as well, too. You haven't really thought on it very much at that point in your life, so. Um, and I had a pretty easy childhood, do all things considered, so I didn't have to think about it very much. But, uh-oh. She knows that we know... Another tender moment. No, of course I would have. I'm a good guy. Alright. So, time to go home. We've journeyed to the past, we've rescued Marl, we've saved the queen from this age, and so, in so doing, we've prevented Marl from uh, being erased from time itself. And one last conversation with Frog. Marl, of course, has not met Frog yet at this point, until right now. But after a compliment to, so to Chrono's sword skills, and after helping Luca overcome her frog prejudice, <laughs> Frog goes into self-exile. And so, on that note, I think we're gonna end the first episode here. Time to save the game, because you can save anywhere on the overworld map. I'll go ahead and do the state save as well. Oop. Let's go this. Yeah. Did I do that? Yeah, there we go. State save saved. And so that's it. First episode done. We'll pick up right here next time. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, this is the very first one, and I just totally winged it. I just threw together a really quick overlay sort of thing. And, you know, again, I just want to play through this game because I love it so much. I've played through it every year since 1996. And this year, 2015, again, is the 20th anniversary of this game being released back in 95. And so... I thought I wanted to do a yeah, 20th anniversary playthrough, 
uh, show you guys my favorite game. So that's about it. If there's things you want to see me do more or less, or things you want to see change, or any feedback at all, just let me know on uh, Twitter, preferably, is the place where I'm most likely to see it. Otherwise, you can leave comments in the video as well. But until then, thanks for watching, and I'll try to get, again, you know, at least one or two of these out per week. But we'll see how it goes. So until then, see ya!